Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've got a paint session for you today. This is going to be a uh, really high detailed pattern. I believe there's going to be 12 different colors going into this pumpkin seed pattern we're going to do for uh, uh, this bull shed swim bait. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of different stencils that I've shown on the, uh, uh, the channel over the years. So we're going to be using Insane. We're going to be using Anarchy Modeling and FS, FX Texture, among some others. So Sound like a good video for you to learn a lot of different techniques? Then come check it out. Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, we can see I, I've got 12, 13 different colors uh, shown up here. There's going to be a lot of detail put into this. This is just one way that you can uh, do the pumpkin seed colors. But we're going to be showing you some different ways to, uh, to layer it in order to get this particular pattern. Um, We've already got the white base coat on there. I went ahead and this one and taped off the eyes. I believe I've done a video over that. If you don't want to remove the eyes or if they're extremely well um, glued into the bait uh, or afraid of damaging the bait to remove them, just put a piece of tape over and cut it out with the X-Acto knife. Uh, one thing before we get started, um, I showed you in one of the previous videos just using alligator clips. And depending on the width of that spacing to uh, help with uh, the movement of these jointed baits, these little uh, hitch pins, I think they're called, are excellent at keeping that bait rigid for you. And so anyway, we're going to start this pattern off with just a wicked pearl white. Uh, we got a white base coat, but when we're doing our bait fish and... Uh, patterns then you know i really like to have a lot of pearls and iridescent type colors in there so just gonna again coat the entire lure with that pearl white and i'll do two coats um, after a heat set. All right, second coat. Uh, had to turn the fan on, extremely humid today. We've been here in Eastern Oklahoma way over in the upper 90s, 97, 98 heat indexes after the five and a half or five inches of rain we got has been extremely tough so that does affect our painting processes uh, I've never had too much of a trouble with Createx paints um, in those humid deals but it does take a little bit longer uh, you know to to dry your base if you're air drying them uh, I do a lot of times when I finish uh, the pattern and especially after clear coat I take those things into the house in the, the air controlled room to to let them kind of cure out. So, uh, okay, our next two colors, uh, I just make my own. Uh, I actually call this the uh, SC pumpkin seed, standing for Salisaw Creek. I've caught a lot of these pumpkin seeds down here, and uh, they have a yellow belly, but it has a little bit of green. So what I use, and, and you can come up with uh, uh, different paints. I'm sure they have some yellows with some some greens in it, but I use iridescent yellow with a little bit of this uh, sap green by Comart uh, to get my color. Now we're gonna stay straight on the belly of this lure. We may come up just a little bit into the sides, but. Okay, there's our belly color. These baits have a lot of pre-cut in uh, scaling on them, so I'm just making sure that 
at different angles I look at this bait, the different ridges sometimes spraying directly at the bait won't cover all of those areas. So, all right, I think that's going to be good. We're going to do a little clean out and we'll be right back. We're going to switch up um, to our lateral line and our kind of our shoulder color, which is going to be a uh, Maui blue. I really kind of wished I had some pearls. I could probably mix some stuff up, uh, but we want kind of that Maui or what's the other one sometimes called Caribbean blue. I've used both of those. I've used some pearl blues, but it's a little dark uh, for this particular pumpkin seed anyway. Um, we kind of prefer uh, in this one, and again, every probably every different region of the lake has a different color of the sunfish, the pumpkin seed sunfish. Uh, but this is the one that I really like, and it is uh, found pretty common here. Make sure after you've done a clean out that you get all that water out, spray a little extra paint, and uh, we're just going to go right down that lateral line and fade that down. Let it overlap that yellow just a little bit. And this is what we're talking about, about building our base. And that's reason, one reason I like the transparent because we do have a pearl white background. So all these paints, and even if they're a thicker paint and not transparent, we're going to thin them so that some of that pearl white will show through. So uh, we're not really trying to get anything on that gill plate. If you do, it's not that big a deal. But Okay, there's our base color. Again, another clean out where we can eventually I'll get it down to my other four blushes brushes are ready and loaded with uh, some of the colors that we're going to use but because we got so many color changes in this even though I got four airbrushes it ain't enough when you're doing 13 different colors so the pumpkin seeds are very um, very colorful fish and again this is just a different way To get to a result, you can use some other meshes, things like that. And if you'd like to see some of those other techniques, leave me a link, or leave me a link, leave me a uh, uh, comment down in the uh, video description. All right, so we're done with Molly Blue. Next we're going to go to is Moss Green. And this is a uh, wicked detail color. So details means that it is a fairly transparent and we're going to go over the back. And moss green is just a darker green. So if you don't have moss green, just or any of these colors, you can do a mix and come up with something. It's just, it's you know, add a little black to a, a bright green. And now we want this to fade over that blue just a little bit into those shoulders. And we're not going real dark, just one or two coats here. And you see how we've got just a little bit of the fade. I want to make sure I got that tail piece covered as well. And actually, I do want to, I'm going to come back and, and do the Molly Blue over this because the pumpkin seed has has a, a lot of, or this particular pattern has a lot of uh, blue actually in that, that gill plate area. So my bad on that, you know, we got to, sometimes you got to come back and redo. I'm so used to staying off of those gill plates that I've forgotten this pumpkin seed that, so let's add a little molly blue in here and have a little redo. All 
All right. So real quick fix there. The next up, we're gonna start our true layering, well, our second layering to this particular pattern. We're gonna be, as I stated in the uh, intro to the video, uh, we're gonna be using a lot of different stencils on this one. Uh, the first one that we're gonna use is my Anarchy Models. Uh, I believe I've got a website or a link in the video description uh, to these mini stencils from Anarchy. They've got a lot of really good ones. And because this bait's a little larger, we're gonna use this uh, modeled, Creature Features modeled uh, on the lower part portion of this bait as well as a little bit on the lower portion of the gear, uh, gill, gill plate. So again, Wicked Red Oxide. And this is a cool color. Uh, we're gonna flatten this out. Watch these heavy baits when you do this. A lot of times you've got, if you use helping hands, problem with the helping hands is you need to get these stencils pretty close to your lure. Now we got to go the other direction and this is the one that sometimes creates big problems here to balance this thing where it don't fall over. Just going to wipe that stencil off even though I'm so I am going to shoot from the opposite side of it. We don't want to smudge anything. And we're just going to start at the back. Everything I do left-handed is tougher. I do want to get a little bit of that on the belly. So we're just going to uh, try to position that and get a few of those dots to extend down into that belly region. Hope you got hope I got this on camera. Let's see. Nope. That's, that's yeah. okay again I just Laying the bait down. And getting around these hook hangers is usually the biggest deal. Just a little bit. Don't need a lot of it. Doesn't have to run all the way through it. Be creative and do it how you want. We're going to start building the... Uh, pumpkin seed, and Anarchy has one of these as well, but uh, I'm going to be using uh, FX Texture Mini Series is what I'm using. Should be a link in the video description below. And we're just going to be going down the with the same color, the red oxide, right down the lateral line of this lure. We're just, again, not pick which designs you want on your bait. You know, I'm not going to get too much into the shoulder.
can tell what our layering does. Just do a little at a time, get the pattern that, that you're looking for. Got a little bit high on that, which really isn't going to matter. You know, in doing this pattern, I've done it a few times. Um, it's not something that I, I paint on a regular basis, but uh, again, lots of different ways uh, to get it. Uh, but we want we want some of the blue to show through. But we, I want to cover more of that up. Get you a reference photo. It's what I did when I first uh, did this pattern. And we'll use some of these bigger ones to just kind of knock out a little bit more of that blue. Now we're going to continue using the uh, same stencil, but we're going to change to another wicked color, and we're going to be using detail yellow ochre. Uh, you can use any sort of browns uh, that you'd like. And again, this is close to a sepia color. Um, or the moss green uh, that we have up there. About knocked it over. I'm trying to do this, keep all this in cameras is a chore, folks. A little bit of that down into the blue. And it's not showing up with great detail, but we're going to come back over that with a little bit different shade. It's a little bit darker of the brown. And you can just stay with the red oxide if that's what you prefer. You know, all these colors, especially when the clear coat hits, uh, provide uh, a lot of depth and we're going to come back with just a little bit darker and what we're going to be using is uh, an old auto air color metallic bronze we're going to kind of lay that over the top of that with some of these smaller and these metallics will really pop when once that clear coat is applied. Okay, now we want to come over the back with that as well. If we can get it to balance there, I'm not sure if I'm in. And with this pin in here, everything's a little different when you're dealing with jointed baits, but I don't want any of the real large stuff. I've got a few others of these, so we'll take the hitch pin out. So next up, we have detailed sepia. Sepia is a, uh, a color I use in a lot of lure art. Uh, 
fish colors. And what we're going to do is kind of seems counterproductive, uh, maybe to some, but come on, man, am I out? No, oh, there it goes. And we're just going to go real lightly over the back and a little down the shoulder. So we're almost like we're not covering up some of that detail we put in there. Uh, but at the same time, we somewhat, we, I guess we are, but. What you're gonna see is that metallic is gonna still show through. It's gonna darken it right here on the back. Coming out, it's just not real thin. It's darken just a little bit of those shoulders with the sepia. And let that metallic grab a little bit of that darker color. As you can see, we're still showing through it. We'll go around a little bit of the nose and the eye with that. All right, we're getting down to two, three, two or three colors because we're going to come back with a little bit of white, which is obviously what we started with. And we're going to be using our third stencil type. And I like Insane Custom Stencils. They've got a lot of wheels. It comes out of here in the uh, great state of Oklahoma. We're going to be using uh, one of the gill wheels today. Uh, you know, I obviously could do some uh, freehand work on this because this bait has a nice gill. But we're going to add a gill flap to it. Okay, so here's what we've got from Insane Stencils. And they've got different size groupings. I think this one will uh, be perfectly fine. Again, you could put a gill plate on with that, which for this size of bait looks appropriate. Uh, I don't know. That one right there might be... Let's try that one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back uh, a lot of time and I just like the contrast of a little bit of coming back with a little bit of white, providing a little bit of contrast. So we're going to, we're going to just, okay, we had to do a battery switch. So hope we didn't lose some of that. Sometimes when you, uh, that happens, you do. So we just laid our stencil on there. We sprayed white. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And again, we're after just a little bit of contrast. I want to come off that right. We'll go ahead and do the other side. It's probably a little drier. I haven't heat set that yet. Let's make sure we got that in camera focus. And we're going to offset this just a little bit. Okay, so we've got there's where we started. We're just going to bring that down a little bit. So we leave a little bit of that white edge. And we're going to do a little black and we're going to come down around the side. Now I'm mainly just spraying on the stencil. I didn't hold that very good. I don't want that much white left. We'll bring it back. And we're gonna bring a little bit of that black down into that, that gill plate. Come back to my dreaded left side here. Flip the stencil. We're also going to come right around the eye, and I'm just and right down that back. 
lightly, not trying to black that all out. I want to leave some of those details. That metallic will show through this transparent black. A little bit on the nose. Guys, we are just about done. Okay, again, that was just a transparent black. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use our end of a paintbrush. We're going to dab just a little tiny bit of this red, transparent red, onto the white. Now, I don't know if our fish in our waters notice that, but you know what I mean? I like it. It's a little bit of contrast. Just tip that gill a little bit of red. We'll do a good heat set. My X-Acto knife. Take that tape off, expose that original eye. And there's a couple little places I don't like that where maybe my tape edge was a little bit over it. I'll dress that up a little bit with the airbrush and the black. So always check out this, if you're utilizing this technique, always check that one out. Because whether it's a little bit of white, whatever it is. So I'm gonna come back with my airbrush and go real low pressure where I can be we're talking about maybe 18 pounds, 17 pounds, somewhere in there. Darken those edges up. Not sure if you can see this on camera. Uh, you see what I'm talking about? That little corner right there. I'm going to do away with that. And guys, there we have it. Now make sure you stay to the end and check out some of the pictures because <clears throat> once the clear coat gets on this one, this pattern is really going to pop. Uh, Andrew, hope you liked the pattern. Hope you watched the video. This is the SC Pumpkin Seed Pattern by Green Country Custom Baits. See you next week.